Let's see how fares the lad. Would you welcome, please, Peter Dayen. Nice pictures, uh, Peter. We'll have a look at them in a few moments. But this is an obsession about painting people, is it, you have? Uh, I suppose you could call it an obsession. Uh, yes, I, I enjoy painting people very much. Well, describe the obsession. I mean, how much painting do you do? Well, normally I paint uh, perhaps seven, eight hours a day, every day, seven days a week. If, seven if. or eight hours a day? Yes. Seven days a week? Yes. And is it only portraits you do? No, no, I do a lot of horses, still life, nude studies. Yeah. Uh, quite varied. What, 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 what's the attraction about painting people, Peter? Um, I've always been interested in people. They're, like yourself, they're very interesting. Um, and I enjoy painting, so I paint people. Mm. Uh, do, you, do you do anything else in your life apart from paint? Nothing? No, no. afraid not. You're a real obsessive character, aren't you? <laughs> and how, how long have you been painting now full time? Uh, it's probably... 15 years professionally. Mm. And I've, there's nothing... I've, done, I've done lots of other things in between to supplement painting. Yes, like what? Um, well, I've done a lot of working on a building site in the early years and repping uh, for a frozen food company. Um, then I got more, more work, more commissions, uh, exhibitions, and uh, I didn't have to do things like that. Yes. Do you go back to Monaghan very often? Is there anybody Regularly, belong to you? Yes. Regularly, I've who's got, there? My sister lives there. Yes. And... Uh, our family, a large family. Yeah. I go back there regularly. Yes, but your welding days are now over, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully. All right, let's have a look at some of the pictures. Well, the first one, of course, we're attracted to is Charles J. Hawhey himself. Now, uh, how did that come about? Well, a chap called Tony Fitzpatrick, I met him uh, on a visit to Ireland in, in a, a Jewels nightclub. And uh, he was talking about, it. first of all, he was talking about having his daughter painted, and then he said he'd like a portrait of Charles Hawhey. So uh, that's how it began. Yeah, did you actually go into Doyle Aaron to paint him there? I'd, I'd actually done the painting of him uh, at Kinsealy at his home, mm -hmm. but I did go into the Doyle to see the background. Yes, and what about the two fellows behind? Surely that is Brian Farrell up there behind him with the arms folded. <laughs> no, it Where isn't. he's always wanted to be, mind you. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Uh, uh, I've heard that said. I don't even know who Brian Farrell is. Um, <laughs> there's... there's the two chaps are from my imagination. Just from your imagination? Absolutely. And, and, and the guy down low. In fact, the chap behind, I was doing another portrait of an Irishman. Yeah. And his portrait was sitting in my studio at the time. And I knew I had to put figures behind Charlie. Yeah. Um, I couldn't have him in the empty doyle. And this other portrait was standing in my studio behind. And I decided to put him in and put glasses on him. Mm. But uh, distorted the face so that it wouldn't be recognisable. And the other guy? Who is he? Again. Well, the, the other guys, again, from my imagination, um, I, I'd, I'd heard people say that it was somebody else as well, and I had to change the face because of that, but it wasn't. It wasn't anybody, I see. No. What's so attractive about painting Charlie, then? Did you have an easy time with him? Is he a good subject? Very good subject. A very powerful man. Powerful. Powerful. That's enough of that. You straight away, you can't win with at, least, with at least one lady in the audience you can't lose with that portrait of Charlie. Yes, all right, now, Sean McBride, tell, talk to us about, uh, about that. Well, what can one say about Sean McBride? I think he's one of the most wonderful human beings in the world. Why do you say that? From what he's done. Yes, and... And, uh, and as a person, t he's got something special about him as a person. What is it special that he has about him? Uh, I think what he's done comes across in his face, and when you meet him, um, you know, he, he, he was chairman of Amnesty and that, he won a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, it just exudes from him. Mm. He was as, as, as with, with uh, other portraits. The portrait speaks for itself, really. Yes, it's a very good one of him, if I may say so, because he was a special guest on the show um, last year, and we enjoyed our time with him. That's a very good uh, portrait of him. I think the best one, for my money, well, perhaps I'm exaggerating, but I think the Cardinal Hume portrait is an extremely good one. Well, I, I think so as well. Um, he was, a, again, a wonderful person. You seem to have selected, um, well, you have selected my best portraits, uh, probably because I had an affinity with these people whilst painting them. And Cardinal Hume, I'd done seven portraits of him. Uh, one of them's hanging in the Vatican. 
and uh, a wonderful, warm, kind, humble man. Yes. Well, when, when, you're, when you're doing something like that, when you're painting somebody like that, how long, about how long would they have to sit for you? Two hours at a time. More if, if they can, but I don't ask for more than two hours at, two a, hours time, at a time. But then how many two-hour sessions? Again, it varies. Depends on, on how long it takes, really. The Cardinal Hume probably sat six two-hour sessions yeah. uh, for seven portraits. That's a long time mm. for out of his busy schedule. And what do you talk to them about? About themselves. It's a wonderful opportunity for somebody to tell me things about themselves. Wonderful for me as well, because mm. uh, most of them have, got very, uh, have had very interesting lives. Um, Especially Cardinal Hume. Yes, and they chat on about themselves. Is that sort of getting under the skin of these people? Is that? No, no not deliberately. Uh, I'm painting, and uh, uh, just to pass the time, I ask them relevant questions, and they, yeah. they, they reply and then tell me little stories about things that have happened to them. Yes. Um, which is wonderful, very interesting. Yes. What about Nick O'Hare then? Where did you do him? At his home. Yeah. Why did you pick that particular pose of him leaning there, nonchalant like? Yes, well, one selects a pose that the feel suits the character of the person. Yeah. Uh, he's a lively man, Michael yeah. O'Hare, and I felt standing was better than sitting. He looked uncomfortable sitting as well. He, he seems better standing. Honestly. So I, I quickly decided to have him standing. Yeah. And what about, what about Mr. Davis here in the snooker? That's a very good one, too. Mm, I think that's probably one of my favourites as well. Did um, he like it? He did, yes. Yeah? yeah, and where is that going now? Who, who, is, who is the owner of that? Well, it, it belongs to the Steve Davis organisation. Oh, I see, yes. And how long would he have posed for you in that particular? Uh, again, I've done quite a few, Steve, and uh, I live near London on the motorway, and he used to pop in for a bacon sandwich when he was passing on his way to Scotland or wherever. Yeah. Uh, and I used to have I had perhaps six or seven two-hour sittings with him. A bacon sandwich? A bacon who sandwich. made the bacon sandwich? I did. You could have taken In fact, I've read somewhere recently that he said he's been at one of the Sunday colour supplements in, in England. Uh, his favourite food was uh, bacon and cheese sandwiches. And <laughs> I by, introduced him to him. <laughs> made by yours truly. Now, there's a fabulous one up there at the back um, to do with Vincent O'Brien. Where would you have got the concept for that one to cover so much of Vincent O'Brien's life with Lester Piggott and all the other people and indeed most of the horses that he's had in his life? Mm -hmm. Where would that concept I think be? it probably was the most difficult painting I've ever done. It happened once I was in Galway painting some family portraits and a chap called Pat Cullinan, a, a, a Galwegian bookmaker, uh, a great fan of Vincent's, asked me could I paint a portrait of Vincent with I think it was 20 of his, or, or his winning horses around him, uh, which I did. He liked it, and uh, the, the painting was finally shown to Vincent, and he signed it for Mr. Cullinan, and uh, asked me to do one for him. Yes. The, the horses are extraordinarily good, and I would think that horses are extraordinarily difficult to paint. Initially, yes, yes. But no more difficult than a portrait. Really? Nothing, none of it's easy, but then it's not terribly difficult either if you apply yourself. Yeah, there, there are so many artists, though, who cannot capture a horse, and you've captured all of those extremely well. Thank you very much. Yes. It, 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 that's a lot of special practice, is it? Mm, Getting yes, it right? Yes. Yes. I, I, I think I spent, I probably spent about 10 years painting portraits, and the, uh, the practice that I had in painting made painting horses easy. Yes. Uh, it, it's, it, there's not a lot of difference. Yes.